I've recorded Foray's complete nocturnes, and these are 13 works that span his entire creative life and reflect his life and his times. Foray's music um, falls roughly into three phases of creative activity, as with many other composers. So his early works, his middle works and his late works. The early works are very much indebted to the music of Chopin. And the middle works, such as the Sixth Nocturne, which you've just heard me playing a little bit of, um, at this time in his life his music started to become rather more personal. And the Sixth Nocturne certainly is one of his most sublime creations, with its um, Garden of Gethsemane music in the middle section and then the late works, as if with the application of acid on skin, a lot of the traits of his earlier works are scorched away and as though what he referred to as the terrible cloak of misery of his encroaching deafness. He lost the ability to hear the peripheries, um, in other words, no low notes and no high notes. A lot of these pieces are focused on the middle register of the keyboard until you get to the final 13th nocturne which has these extraordinary scales that rock it up to the top of the keyboard as though in revolt against the notes that he could no longer hear. World War I certainly left its, work, its mark on Europe and his music reflected this. There's a very interesting trajectory in the 13 Nocturnes of Gabriel Fauré, uh, which is from what seems to be tragedy witnessed in Nocturne number one to tragedy experienced in number 13. And the journey that you travel from, from, from number one to 13, from the sort of classic, more comfortable, um, enraptured night music through to the nightmare music of the later Nocturnes, which is surely shaped by um, what he witnessed in the tragic events of World War I. And while we're on the subject of journeys, that brings me on to the most personal um, aspects of Foray's style, which is his harmonies. Um, and it's something that I get quite excited about. Um, most composers um, create roads in their harmonic language. There is a point of departure and a point of arrival. In the case of Foray, he seems to have paths which are trodden as though by wild animals in a woodland. You never quite know where he's going to jump to next. And he will use harmony for purely coloristic effects. And you can start off in one key and finish in the same key um, a few bars later, but seem to have traveled through every single chromatic in between. And it can be rather disorienting, but it's also very, very beautiful. I've recorded the complete nocturnes on the Edition Peter Sounds record label, um, which um, is a compendium to their Urtext edition of the same music, which was prepared by Roy Howard. This clears up decades of misprints and misunderstandings about what Foray's original intentions were. My performances hopefully reflect this. <laughs> 